Here's a little quick tip. Um, I use this a lot, especially on repair videos, because when you're making a repair video, uh, it's real easy to get caught up in talking slow because you're actually focused on fixing the, the thing, right, rather than a scripted video. So a lot of times I find myself talking real slow, as I do with a lot of other people that do repair videos, as in I can take the information in and process it fa faster than they're giving it to me because their primary point of con concentration is repairing the thing and then the video is secondary, right? So if you're using the HTML5 player, and I know most people know this, but if you go here, in the settings you have speed. And like if we let this play... Just going through our mess of storage and things and kind of plucking out what we're wanting to salvage and what we're not. <clears throat> so I got a bunch of picture but no sound. So... There's still a couple of stations in Tijuana that broadcast an analog. It's got good grayscale, it's just not very bright and it's kind of blurry. The picture's very crooked. So, at least it shows signs of life. The next thing we do is get the CRT tester on it and uh, see what the guns look like. Here it is with the back off. You can see it's a pretty open and airy modular chassis. Well, that's a dust. Here's your power supply filters. Your uh, click type rotary VHF and your continuous UHF. So I can easily watch this 40 minute video at, at a speed of positive 1.5. And that really helps with these longer videos. Uh, this is the same, this is the same place where you look at the quality and the HTML5 player plays, will actually play 60 frames per second, which is, I shoot a lot of stuff in 60 frames per second. Not this video, this is actually super low resolution, uh, for this video, because this is just a quick fun video, but I highly recommend on some of these videos what cranking the speed up and watching more of the video anyway that's just kind of a quick tip but i know a lot of you know about that okay i thought this might be a fun little repair project this is a and i usually don't work on stuff like this i usually eol it or into the line it now, this is a phillips magnavox it's like what about a 19 inch tabletop and I found this on an errand today face down in the street you can see the uh, CRT has a lot of deep scratches in it I mean it's really it's really bruised up bad and I had a I grabbed this as a set to EOL which if you don't know what EOL is or you haven't seen any of the EOL videos, search uh, EOL for a TV or end of the line on my channel and you'll see. But I, I, had a, I had an idea which is if we actually get to a point, which I still kind of have some doubts, where we have Trump debating Hillary on the same stage, I think that a an EOL for every debate is appropriate and mandated. I just do. After Thursday night's uh, acceptance speech, I have never, I don't think I've ever seen a situation where somebody yelled at a microphone for over an hour. I mean, that, that thing was practically microphone abuse. There were times where you could just hear the, the compressor hard limiting because it was just too much for the whole thing or maybe the the uh, uh, capsule and the mic was just like being driven up to its maximum uh, excursion or travel or whatever it was pretty interesting anyway not to go off on some political thing because all the comments now will be political but this has a lot of the typical characteristics of sets that I find on the curb They've been just thrown out there, a lot of deep scratches. 
power button's broken. Um, and usually what I do with these is I grab them, throw them in the car if they don't smell like roaches, plug them in. If they work, I'll EOL them. If not, I put it, if not, I'll either, depending on the set, I'll either yank the chassis for parts and put it in the dumpster or just throw it in the dumpster. Um, but this one had an interesting problem that I haven't seen on a, a microprocessor controlled set, which is smoke started coming out of it when I turned it on. And usually if there's any kind of air great enough to cause smoke on one of these modern sets, the processor just locks it out. It detects the problem and won't let it do it. So I popped it open, I'll admit that, and I want to show what the problem is and we'll try and fix it. So the deep scratches, the broken power switch, uh, the general abuse. The other two kind of common traits we see with these curbside sets is this is broken off. On this specific one it's not completely broken off, but this is broken. And then a lot of times the cord was cut off, but not in this case. So anyway, uh, you can kind of see this is a high hour set by the, the, um, by the amount of dirt and kind of dust around the flyback and the CRT. It's, you can see here, this is quite dirty. High voltage attracts dust. So I plug this in and it was power cycling. I can plug it in now. I hope it'll survive it. So when I push the power switch, it's not doing right now what it did earlier. You see it there? You see a flash? That disk capacitor right there. Now here's the thing with this, what I'm doing right now, what I'm doing right now, see that little squirt puff of smoke and fire coming out of there? What I'm doing right now is a huge no-no for something solid state. If this was a customer set, there's no way you'd see me do this. Um, so this is one of those fairly rare instances where you get a TV and you can actually visually see and smell a problem with it. I believe that is one of those little blue disc capacitors like right there. And what they do is they, it goes between the collector and emitter on the horizontal output transistor and it kind of regulates or pads down the high voltage and this one is literally just arced out and caught fire so I thought in this video we would have fun and just change it I'm sure I got another chassis here from a set I EOL we could stick one in there and see if it fixes it so let me try and get it out I think it's mandatory that we dial in on that for a minute. Let's get right up there and uh, I know there are some Samsung fanboys out there that will be happy to see that EOL. So I was correct. Here is our horizontal output transistor here and the capacitor was here to here. And you can see right there is let me get in the center of the screen here. Horizontal output transistor. 
capacitor collector there you can see it marked with a C comes to this side emitter comes to this side here's what's left of it unbelievably I was able to read this and it says 561 on it which I believe is 560 picofarads at 2 kilovolts so let me see if I can find one of those and we'll shove it in there and see if we have a working set this is this is a total time waster but it's just kind of fun now I have seen those I have seen those um, those capacitors fail before and I think it was radio TV phono nut that actually tipped me off to because sometimes some of these sets will have four of them in parallel well if you don't have all four of them in there and they're they're all good the high voltage will run away and be too high and then it might go into shutdown uh, I think I dealt with that once before. So anyway, let me uh, see if I got a, a 561 there. And I don't know what this was out of, but right here is a 561 at 2 kilovolts. So I'll yank that out and we'll stick it in here and maybe our Samsung can dime a you know, I just can't see her allowing him to debate her. I just can't see that. I just can't see. But hey, I hope it happens because we're going to roll these EOLs real hard. So I just I just uh, tacked it right on the bottom there. I'm not even going to waste my time with it. Let's fire it, plug it in and see what it does. There's a chance it might work, but you know, you just never know. Well, okay, it made a clicking noise when I plugged it in, so here goes. Ooh, I heard high voltage come up. Oh, nice. Nice. Hot sound. Do we have any sound? How oh, the friggin' volume, the bu volume buttons are broken too. That's weird. It kind of came up and then it. Well, let me get the generator on it. Let's see what it does. All right. Well, I've got the VG91 on it, and. Sorry about all the shaking in the camera. Let's turn this off. Oh. Well, you got your choice there. Um, not bad. Not bad at all. Convergence is, is actually quite whacked out on it for a modern set. But you know what? It works. Um, it works and it's ready to EOL. This connector is just absolutely destroyed. I don't know what they did to route that out, but you could put a 20 penny nail in that hole. The hole there is massive. So anyway, that's a little Friday night political repair of a EOL are right there so we'll have to um, have to hope those debates happen and then probably uh, do a live EOL it all depends on 
all depends on how I uh, what I come up with at the time yeah this thing is destroyed worn out none of the controls work um, power buttons broken but hey it'll still burn the same I mean, it's weird because when you push it, the, the on-screen display comes up, but it doesn't change. I gotta wait until it goes out. And I push it, and the on-screen display comes up, but yet the, the volume doesn't actually change. So, I don't know what that's all about. Well, that's appropriate, isn't it? Okay, now how do I get out of this? I don't know. All right, this has gone on long enough. Oh, it went up from 23 to 24, I think, or from 22 to 24. How weird. How weird. It's done. It's worn out. It's garbage. Time to EOL. So we started out with this, we might as well finish with this.